All right, here we go. Let's wrap up the chapter here by multiplying some polynomials. Fantastic. This is classic. You ask your parents about this. They'll all remember uh, when they multiplied polynomials, they did the FOIL method. And that's why I got this picture here. It's pretty cool. I don't know about you, but it makes me want to uh, stick my face into some aluminum foil. I don't know if that's how I did it, but that's super cool. First, outside, inside, last. We're not going to do that method, though. Um, that's kind of old school. We're going to just multiply like we've been multiplying with uh, the distributive property. So real quick, we've we've been doing this, but I kind of want to look at some exponent rules because check out the difference here. All right, so we got a monomial times any kind of polynomial here. So it's just distributive property, so we're going to distribute. But I, we put a little twist in here. Let's check it out. When I distribute, we're going to say 2x times 3x and then 2x minus 4. So I added a, a variable out here in front, which we didn't. We kind of just stayed away from before, just doing a number in there. So what happens? What is 2x times 3x? So what is if you had 2x and you multiply it by 3x, and same thing, you could say minus uh, 2x times that 4. So we're distributing it and uh, showing all the steps there. What does this really mean? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. x times x is just xx. Or using exponents, which would be much nicer, would be 6x squared. Fantastic. So the rule is if you have x and x, you're just adding these exponents. They're 1 and 1. It adds, adds together 2. If you want to write it out, that's fine with me. I don't care as long as you get that answer. Uh, and then what are you minus here? 2x times 4 is just your 8x. So you really get 6x squared minus 8x. So we're going to multiply this out. And this is going to be huge important this year. We're going to keep doing this thing. Um, distributed property. Awesome. So here the exponents will get a little bit bigger. So I'm doing this whole term out here. This whole term is getting multiplied through everybody over here. We're just going to distribute it through everybody. What's going to happen here? What is 2x cubed times x squared? So it would be great if we can go straight to this. It's just 2x to the fifth. You add the exponents together. If you need to think of it as 2x cubed times x squared, I mean, that's fine. But that is x to the fifth power. That's the same thing as x cubed times x squared. But I'm going to just go straight to x fifth. You just add the exponents. So hopefully that's good. If there's nothing written, remember, it's just a 1 up there. So we're going to say 2 times 7 is 14. x to the third times x bumps you up to x to the fourth. And then I'm just doing by a constant here, 2x cubed. So I'm times it by that 5. 2 times 5 is 10. And there's no more x's to change that. So there it is. Boom. I went ahead and distributed that. So we're really just doing a more distributive property. Fantastic. Uh, a lot of times we do a binomial times some kind of poly polynomial. In this case, they're both binomials. We're going to do this all the time. So we're going to get good at this. We're going to practice this bad boy here. So how do I do this? Well, I'm going to do a double distribute. So this is really just double distribute. Sometimes we'll triple distribute. We can distribute all day long. So in this case, Let's uh, distribute the 2x just like we did up there. I'm going to go to him, and then I'm going to distribute it to him. So what do I say? 2x times x is 2x squared. Then I'm going to say 2x times that minus 4. Remember, that's a negative 8x. Then I'm going to come down here and say 3 times x is 3x. And then I'm going to distribute him over here, and I'm going to say 3 times 4 is 12. What's nice about this? Uh, these middle two terms are the same, so we're, let's just clean up a little bit. I've got my 2x squared. These are both x's, so that's going to be minus 5x. And then you're going to have minus 12 on the outside. So this is the standard form. That's how we'd like to see them uh, when you multiply this all out. Very good. you want to do one more together? Let's do another one together. All right, so what do I do? Double distribute. So I'm looking just at this first term, and I'm going to distribute it. So it, both terms get it. So 3y times 2y is 6y squared. Then I'm going to say 3y times that negative 3 is minus 9y. Distribute the next guy. Remember, this is a negative 1. Bring that negative with it. So it's negative 2y. And a negative 1 times a negative 3 is a positive 3. Fantastic. Once we have that, boom, the middle terms are the same. So I'm just going to clean it up. 6y squared minus 9 minus 2 gives you minus 11 y and there it is right there so those are a binomial times a binomial that's that whole classic foil thing your probably parents know we used to memorize them first outside inside last but really i want you to know it's just distributive property why because foil doesn't work for this one uh we're just multiplying so again i got a binomial times a trinomial here so what am i going to do i'm just going to distribute this bad boy out so we're going to do this two ways let's just straight up distribute this thing so 
holy cow, let's do this. So I'm going to do the first one in red. So 2x times x squared. And again, if you want to write it all out, you can. I'm just going to kind of do it. 2x times x squared is x cubed. 2x times 6x is 12x squared. 2x times that minus 4 is minus 8x. This one I'll change colors, but really we're doing the same thing. Let's just do this one. Then we're going to distribute the 1 to this guy. Then we're going to distribute the 1 to this guy. So 1 times x squared will be 1x squared. You don't have to write the 1 unless you want to. Uh, 1 times, oh, I like 1. 1's nice. 1 times that is negative 4. So I did my little, uh, in this case, triple distributed like, through there. I just kept it going. Really, I had double distributed it, but to three terms. And then now, uh, maybe you, let's write it so it looks pretty. So we've got 2x cubed. Let's put my x squareds together. I didn't see any other x cubes. But there definitely is another x squared. And there's going to be minus 8x plus 6x. So I'm just putting them next to each other with that commutative property. And then I'm going to wrap this bad boy up with combining any like terms I can find here. It looks like I have 12x squared and 1x squared, 13x squared. Uh, minus 8x plus 6x minus 2x. And there it is. And it's a monster, but we can, mo we, we can do it. Just write it all out. Show those steps. So it, as you can see, there's a, there's a lot of terms here in this polynomial. It cleans up okay. So some people like this box method here. And basically what it is, you just take what you're multiplying. So I'm like multiplying x squared plus 6x minus 4. So I didn't write the plus, but you can definitely write the plus there if you want. Uh, and then over here, I'm doing 2x plus 1. So if you like that little plus sign, that's cool. You can do that. Uh, I usually leave it out. I, I don't like it. Uh, I just know it's positive because it's there. So I'm writing these two things, and then I made a nice little grid table here. And now what I'm doing, this is just a, a graphic organizer. All this is to help you organize your thoughts. We're going to multiply each one of these. So this is 2x by x squared. 2x times x squared is your 2x cubed. And then I got 2x times 6x is 12x squared. 2x times that. See how we're doing the same thing? It's just, it's just a way to kind of make this look nice. 1 times 6x, and then 1 times negative 4. So really, that just gave me the same thing over here, didn't it? This is the same thing. Uh, and then some people could like to add like terms from here. I, I only see the 1x cubed. And I can see these guys right here. Don't they match up? I'll circle them. They're the same. So I've got this 13x squared. And oh, look at this. These match up right here. So that's kind of cool. And then I'm left with the minus 4. So sometimes it's nice and pretty. Look at that, how they go diagonally. That's awesome. I don't care what method you use as long as you're, you're rocking some right answers here. If you like to just distribute all out, show it all. Sometimes I think it is easier to, to show your work this way when you've got uh, this trinomial over here and it kind of helps clean it up. Awesome. Let's do another one of these. Uh, I'm going to go straight to the box on this. You know, or I say box, but it's, it's a table method. Um, let's go ahead and do it. Let's go straight to the table. I see that the second one is three terms, so I'm going to say, ooh, I need to help organize my life. Not my life, my math. <laughs> or my life, I don't know. Maybe you help organize your life. Uh, so on top, I'm going to put that one up here. So I'm going to say 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. Over on the side here, I'm going to say 2x squared minus 1. So just make sure you keep that sign in front. Uh, it doesn't look as pretty when I don't draw it with the computer, but it still works. Draw it the best you can or get a straight edge if you really really need that straight for you. Uh, so 2 times 3 is 6. x squared times x squared, what is it? You add them x to the fourth. 2x squared uh, times 5x would be 10x cubed. 2x squared times 2, make sure you have that sign, is negative 4x squared. Boom, I love 1, but it's negative, so it's going to change all the signs, isn't it? Negative 1 times 5x is negative 5x. Negative times a negative plus 2. And you don't have to write the positive 2. Uh, in fact, let's not do that. It's just a 2 in there. Awesome. So once I box it all up, look for like terms. There's 6x to the fourth. Did the diagonal trick work for me? It didn't in this case. Ah, bummer. But that's okay. I can see I got a 10x cubed there. I do have some like terms here. I've got this minus 3x squared and this minus 4x squared. So I'm going to have a minus 7x squared. Uh, I see an x there, minus 5x plus 2. So even though it wasn't as pretty as that one on top, sometimes it happens, uh, it still works out, doesn't it? So that's the table method. I recommend it anytime you've got a, a, a binomial times a trinomial or something. Maybe it's even four terms. We could have a, a, a five terms over here. It could be a huge box, and it just take up half your paper and half your day, and you'd probably be pretty excited about it. Uh, but usually we won't do too much more than that right there. Awesome. So just some special cases. Uh, this is the big one to be worried about for multiplying. This is a perfect square. Why is it a perfect square? You know, anytime you square something, you're multiplying it by itself. Like what is 3 squared? It's 3 times 3. 
What is x squared? It's x times x. So what is this parentheses squared? It is the parentheses times itself. So it's 3x minus 5 times 3x minus 5. So don't freak out, man. You just got to write it out like that, the 3x minus 5. Now what are we set for? We are set for double distribute. And if you wanted to use the table method, there's nothing wrong with it. Some people like it to always go to their table. Uh, 3x minus 5, 3x minus 5. That's great. Do the table. At this point, though, I'm really more of a double distribute kind of guy. I like to see it. So 3x times 3x. 3 is 9x squared. 3x times that 5 is minus 15x. What's cool about when you square it, you get a lot of things that you get the same thing here in the middle. So that's pretty cool. That's always going to happen there. And then plus 25, minus 5 times minus 5. So middle terms are the same. Boom, minus that 30x plus 25. So it's perfect square. And you can see when you're done, you're going to get these perfect squares, you know, like things you know the square root of, like 3 times 3 is 9, 5 times 5 is 25. You know, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. You get these perfect squares. So that's a, that's a good one to know. There is one called difference of squares. And if you it looks just like a perfect squares, but what's the difference? Uh, one of them is subtraction. So uh, if you don't have to know the names of these, but it's going to come up later on where we really do. And what's, what's unique about this, when I multiply this one out, this one's kind of cool. x times x is x squared. x times that 5 will be minus 5x. We'll check this out. Plus 5x and then you get minus 25. Well, what happens here? Oh yeah, middle terms cancel out. Minus 5x, boom, cancels out plus 5x. You get x squared minus 25. So they look a little shorter when you multiply them out because those middle terms are canceling. So that's pretty cool and it's gonna come up a lot later on. Um, so that is that does have a name as well. But for this section, really, we're looking at perfect squares. Okay, so uh, go ahead and write this first one down. So write this first one down. We're gonna do it together and then I'm gonna have you try the other three uh, on your own here. And again, you got to write this one down because we want to make sure no one's being shady out there and just trying to copy the notes. Make sure you have it. Write these in there. Uh, not that anyone's shady out there. Uh, we're all doing this the right way. Here we go. So uh, I, I kind of mixed up here because I threw two letters at you. Is that going to freak you out? We got two variables. Well, let's just, just do it. Just multiply it. Try it. See what happens. 2a times 3a is 6a squared. No problem. What is 2a times minus 4b? Well, 2 times minus 4 is that minus 8. What is a times b? a times b is a times b. That's it. So don't freak out. Not a problem here. Uh, we usually put them in alphabetical order. So you could say this is 3ba, but really we're going to say 3ab. So we do put them in alphabetical order. Uh, and then what is b times minus 4? It's 4b squared. And can we combine anything? Sure, these middle terms are exactly the same. So I've got minus 8 of these ab's plus 3 of them. i got minus 5 ab's minus that 4b squared in the end. So we definitely going to have two variables in here and some weird things going on. Don't worry, just distribute it and everything will be all right. Fantastic. So uh, go ahead, give it a whirl here. Go ahead and pause the video and try these next three. Good luck. All right, so the first one was just a monomial. Just distribute that, uh, and we're good to go. Make sure your exponents match up. Grade that. I gave you one of those perfect squares over here. Uh, hopefully you came up with this answer down here at the bottom. And then the last one, I went ahead and did the box method or the table method. No worries if you distribute that out. I don't care. As long as you came up with this answer, you are good to go. This was a nice one because it did work out so that these were lined up and you can just mash them together. Fantastic, that's it. That is multiplying polynomials. We're gonna practice it and practice it and practice until we got it and we can do it in our sleep and we're gonna blow up that mastery check and uh, we're gonna be done with the chapter. All right, good luck on the mastery check. Peace out.